Today, we return to Caboolture Special School to learn about how to use the department's new RESPECT program. The quality materials that are contained within the RRE program, and I'm thinking of those three key elements that sit within the framework. So the personal and social awareness, those respectful interactions and protective behaviours. All of those areas are of high value to our students and I believe are of value to every single student in Queensland schools. Now examples of that uh, would be around human rights, gender stereotypes, self-regulation, also about speaking up for yourself and for others in certain circumstances and also how to seek help for yourself and others, learning more about your personal identity, how to develop those friendships and maintain those friendships that we know are such a, an important part of health and wellbeing for our students and individuals. And importantly, inclusion, belonging and valuing and celebrating diversity. So as part of our discussions moving forward on our four-year strategic plan and annual implementation plan, with RRE included in those conversations, some key focus discussions will be around how we align with the Peter 12 CAF, our student engagement wellbeing framework, and also the HPE curriculum and whether we are using RRE materials as a standalone within the HPE curriculum or a blend. Something that's really attractive to me about the materials uh, is that there is a level of flexibility around how they're implemented. So I have looked a lot at the RESPECT um, program and the resources available and there is a particular unit on body parts um, in the prep curriculum which is very, very appropriate um, for my prep students. I've had to modify it slightly and um, add additional visuals to those pro to those to the handouts um, in order for my students to access it we've created games where the children can use little visuals and cover themselves as well and we point at different parts of the body um, we've got baby dolls that we then refer to that are anatomically correct so that we can talk about the different body parts as well um, so we're using a combination of the resources on the hub which have been very useful don't have to start from scratch, I always appreciate that. And then as typically happens in a special school, we've had to modify them slightly. But in most cases, they're very clear, they're very simplified, and it makes it really easy for the kids to understand what's expected of them. And there is a lot for kids, like from prep to year 12 as well. Like that's really important. We sort of take our prep resources, our year one resources, and we backtrack them for the general capabilities, um, but there is a lot available there for, um, for different level learners as well. So explicitly teaching consent for our students who are more vulnerable than their same age peers due to their complex communication and behavioural needs is really important. And within that, we need to provide opportunities to model as well as provide them opportunities to express the ability to seek, deny, and give consent within any situation, be it in the playground, relationships with their peers, where they require support in physical care or therapies. Uh, the biggest challenge I've faced in the classroom with providing RRE is around their communication and them having a voice within those processes, allowing them to show consent regardless so if a student doesn't want to do something allowing them time to process that those things are happening um, whether it's something that has to occur or whether it's something that we can avoid and do later if it's something we can look at doing a first and a then so if it's something that has to happen or a transition that has to occur throughout the day, we'll provide time for processing. We might provide opportunities for a song to be played around what that process is. We might provide more visuals. We often, often times I will just sit on the ground with them and wait. Waiting is really important for our little people to provide time for that processing and to then process, take it on board that that's what's got to happen look at the visuals and then consent to being a part of that transition. It's really, really important 
to give kids a voice, to have control over what's happening to them in order to help keep them safe, to help them from being as vulnerable as some of our kids are. Learning about body, learning about vocabulary, um, having that vocabulary is just really important to their success and their safety. And in today's society, that's what they need.